That time of year, everybody. End of the year, aka game of the year, aka game award season. I actually really enjoyed the game awards. They have a lot of problems. Jeff Keighley's kind of sleazy. And I understand that these award shows basically sum up to one big popularity contest. Doesn't change the fact that's still fun. I mean, it's just great for the first time in a long time to just have a time of year that isn't E3 to be strictly dedicated towards the games, to celebrate the games, all the games. Even if the game doesn't win, sometimes it's nice to just see it get a nomination, you know? You get the orchestra, you get the trailers, and you get some very funny and or stupid moments. So I really like, like the game awards. I am eagerly looking forward to the award show in 2023. And of course, I'm very much curious to see what our game of the year nominations are going to be for this year. So I wanted to try and make a video and talk about that. Talk about what I think will be up for this year's game of the year. This was this is a really difficult year to think about that. 2023 has given us the single most stacked and acclaimed list of games, I would argue, since 2017. It is very high competition. So the games that are going to be on this list either have to be really big critically really big in popularity, or a big mixture of the both. 2023 was such a stacked year with so many great 8 and 9 out of 10 games that I believe there are only three real locks. The first lock, the first game that will definitely be there, is obviously Tears of the Kingdom. Come on, it's not its not even up for debate. Of course Tears of the Kingdom is going to be on there. It's the sequel to Breath of the Wild, one of the biggest games of all time, and furthermore, one of the highest rated games on Metacritic, one of the most acclaimed games of the year, and as someone who has played it, I can tell you that the game is freaking fantastic. It is such a great sequel to Breath of the Wild. It builds upon Breath of the Wild in all the right ways. The Ultra Hand mechanic that allows you to build whatever you want was crazy. Basically gives you unlimited player freedom. The addition of the sky and the depths are great additions to Tears of the Kingdom. It's exactly what it's set out to be, right? on Breath of the Wild 2.0, and it does it incredibly well, and it got fantastic results for it. So Tears of the Kingdom, obviously. What's the second lock? The other obvious answer, the second, the second most critically acclaimed game of the year, Baldur's Gate 3. Now I think Baldur's Gate 3 is a bit, is a bit of a bigger deal than Tears of the Kingdom, because Baldur's Gate 3 came out of nowhere. Like, let's be real, Tears of the Kingdom was a sequel to Breath of the Wild, already one of the best games of all time. We knew it was gonna be a fantastic game. Baldur's Gate 3, I knew nothing about, but then shit, all the reviews came calling it RPG of the Year, RPG of the Generation, one, one of the best games of all time, getting a 96, 96, 97 on Metacritic. And it's becoming one of the most played games of this year. So not only does it have the critical side, but it has the popularity side, just like Tears of the Kingdom. Now I am currently playing Baldur's Gate 3 as we speak. I can't really comment too much on it because I'm only like 15 hours to what is obviously going to be at least a 100 hour playthrough. I'm not, so I can't really comment too much on it, but what I will say is... My personal issues with some of the game aside, particularly with how cluttered the menu is and sometimes the combat being way too goddamn hard, I completely understand what everyone loves about it. There is, there is definitely a hundred different ways to tackle multiple different things in Baldur's Gate 3. It's honestly really impressive almost borderline intimidating just how many options that you have in Baldur's Gate 3. So the RPG stuff in Baldur's Gate 3, I will say, is definitely very impressive. Um, I'm enjoying the story, I'm enjoying the characters. Surprisingly well acted, wasn't expecting that. It looks great, has great presentation. Yeah, I completely understand why Baldur's Gate 3 is getting the love it deserves. And honestly, 
kudos uh, if you had told me that tears of the kingdom wasn't gonna be a lock for game of the year i would have said you were crazy but here we are with not one but two but three locks and one of them is Baldur's Gate 3. So I'm just really happy that Tears of the Kingdom is getting some sort of competition. Now the last lock I've got is a game that came out in October. But would you be shocked if I told you that it's not Spider-Man 2? Hell, I don't even think it's Super Mario Bros. Wonder. It is a little fantastic game called Alan Wake 2. That is the only other lock I believe is set in stone for the Game Awards 2023. Now, it is worth noting that Alan Wake 2, unlike Baldur's Gate 3 and Tears of the Kingdom, we don't really know how it's doing on the we don't really know how it's doing on the success side. Now, with that said, Alan Wake 2 is getting huge amounts of praise. It, it, it's 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 honestly crazy because I don't think this I don't think the scores on Metacritic and Open Critic properly reflect just how much praise Alan Wake 2 is getting. Everyone that is playing Alan Wake 2, excuse me, the majority of people that are playing Alan Wake Wake 2 are not only calling it one of the best games of the year, but one of the best games of all time. Some are calling it one of the best survival horror games of all time. Some are calling it Remedy's best game. Game, the praise that Alan Wake 2 is getting is crazy. And unlike the other games, unlike Baldur's Gate 3 and Tears of the Kingdom, and this is me getting up and this is me getting objective here. The Game Awards love a cinematic game. They love those big cinematic games that 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 I kind of add that prestige to the Game Awards, you know? And frankly, Alan Wake 2 is the indie art house of the Game Awards. It deserves to be up for Game of the Year. But looking at it objectively, the Game Awards are going to put Alan Wake 2 here as their big artsy fartsy cinematic choice. And honestly, I'm completely okay with that. It has a critical acclaim. It has the popularity, if not in sales, not necessarily in sales, but just with how much people are talking about it. And most importantly, it's going to fulfill a requirement, which has been at most of the other game game awards. So, so yes. So yes, for all that, Alan Wake 2 is going to be there. I, I guarantee you. I promise you. I would bet my life savings that those three games will most certainly be there. But I would argue this is where it gets interesting. Because there's still three other slots that honestly are fair game. But I do have my own opinions on what three games will be alongside the three locks. Number one, and probably the one that is most likely to be there, Spider-Man 2. Take it easy. Take it easy. Let me be clear. Spider-Man 2 is a fucking great game. I do not refute that. I loved Spider-Man 2 very, very much. But we got to be honest with, with, with ourselves here. Like, in a year like this, you need to do something extraordinary to be able to stand out and be called a lock spider-man 2 as great as it is as great as it is the extent of praise that i have heard for spider-man 2 doesn't go farther than one of the best superhero games of all time which is great but when you're going up against games that have been called the best games of all time period the competition is steep you, you, you know the competition is real steep Look, is Spider-Man 2 the freaking 10 out of 10s that the other three games I just listed off? Probably not. But what people are saying about Spider-Man 2 is true. It is a 9 out of 10 game. A truly great game. And it is one of the best superhero games. Right up there with Arkham City, if not even higher. So Spider-Man 2 definitely deserves to be here. And furthermore, it is, it's easily one of the most popular and best-selling games. I think, didn't PlayStation say that this thing sold like, like 5 million copies in two weeks? Which is more than Super Mario Bros. Wonder which is a mainline Mario game. That is insanity. So I do believe that Spider-Man 2 has a very big chance of making it here. Next option, I'm gonna go with Resident Evil 4. Easily one of the best remakes ever. It, it's the new gold standard for the remake. 
I understand that in this year, the Game Awards would probably want to do something a little more original, but it's worth noting, RE2 and Final Fantasy VII re re Remake both got nominated for several awards, including Game of the Year. Now to play devil's advocate, you could say that RE4 is less of a drastic change in its remake, so that could potentially hold it back, but Resident Evil 4, just because it's a remake, I don't think it's gonna really leave it out of the game of the year conversation. It's one of the highest rated games of this year. It sold a crap ton of copies, and I think that's in large part due to Capcom being really smart and releasing the Separate Ways DLC a couple months but a couple months before the game awards to really help keep it fresh in everyone's mind. So all in all, I'd say Resident Evil 4 holds a pretty damn good chance. Finally, my controversial take. This is probably gonna get me a couple of uh, couple of mean stares, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I do believe that Starfield is gonna make it in the game of the year conversation for the game awards. Now, let me be clear. Of the games I just listed, Starfield is the least rated. I would also argue it's the least qualified to be up for the game of the year. Don't get me wrong, I really like Starfield. In fact, you could say I love Starfield. But when compared to the other games on this list, it's not even in the same margin of, of quality as those five other games are. Me loving Starfield is strictly a personal thing. Objectively speaking, Starfield has way too many problems to really set itself with the likes of those other games in terms of critical talk. Now, the reason I think Starfield is going to be up for Game of the Year is, first, first off, Starfield has a Metacritic rating of 83. There have been games nominated for the Game of the Year category that have gotten significantly lower than an 83. So, you know, that alone isn't going to disqualify Starfield too much. But I don't really think Starfield is going to get up there because of its score. Although the score is pretty good, Starfield is going to be up there strictly because of the popularity. Strictly because of the popularity. Starfield is one of the best selling and most talked about games of this year. It is the fifth best selling game of 2023, beating Resident Evil 4 and Final Fantasy 16. And that game still released on Game Pass. Starfield has a lot of reach. You can make the argument that the talks aren't necessarily that good, but what people don't understand is that all press to an extent is good press. And whatever gets the game out there is what's gonna be on people's minds. But the point I'm trying to make is people are talking about Starfield a lot and it's sold incredibly well. So I would argue just on the stance of, of leaving an impact in 2023, I would argue that Starfield is most likely going to be up for Game of the Year. So those are my six choices for the Game of the Year can category. Again, outside of Baldur's Gate 3, Tears of the Kingdom, and Alan Wake 2, even the other three games I just listed could change. Like, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, and Starfield are all games I really, really, really like. They could easily be swapped out with some of the other equally great, equally popular games that came out in this year. They could easily be replaced with Pikmin 4, or, or Armored Core 6, or Final Fantasy 16, maybe even Hi-Fi Rush if the Game Awards are feeling a little spicy. Sea of Stars, Cocoon, Jedi Survivor, so many many different games, so many different options. So I wouldn't be shocked if Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, or Starfield had a switch up and we see something different in those categories. But for right now, I'm sticking with the locks, Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3, Alan Wake 2, and the remaining three, Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, and Starfield. But I guess we'll find out very, very soon if I am right. But until then, guys, thank you so much for watching. What do you think is going to be up for Game of the Year? Seriously, I I'm really curious. Like, give me your six in the comments. I feel like this is going to be a really good conversation. So after this, the next thing that, that is coming out is a review. And that review is halfway done. And it's for a little fantastic game called Alan Wake 2.
Oh, trust me, my friends. So much to say on that one. But until then, speaking of my Instagram, if you want to follow it, that's at the Gamer Critic, where I talk about a bunch of to the stuff I'm playing, my thoughts on certain news, reviews, and so on and so forth. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Helps a ton. Be good people, and I will talk to you guys soon. Peace.